The Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture present Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson. Also presented by Adina Springs South, Double Diamond Farm, Gulf Stream Park, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Ocala Breeders Sales Company, and Tampa Bay Downs. Hi everyone, I'm Kate and Bradar filling in for John Henderson on this edition of Thoroughbred Week as we recap the Breeders' Cup World Championships, including a battle of champions in the distaff and the race for the ages in the classic. We begin with the juvenile turf. Good Samaritan, the 5-2 favorite. Michael Rona has the call. Into the far turn, it's well abled in the front from Oscar Performance and Channel Maker. Keep quiet. Followed in fifth by favorable outcome, then Major Look, followed on the fence by Lancaster Bomber. Next is Bowie's hero, big score splitting horses. Good Samaritan obliged to travel very deep past the quarter pole with six or seven lengths to pick up. Oscar Performance, the new leader at the 316th pole, getting the head and now the body in front from the early leader, well abled. Then Lancaster Bomber and Good Samaritan running home well, but Oscar Performance is well clear. In second spot, Lancaster Bomber and then Good Samaritan, but Oscar Performance has won it by a length and a half. Oscar performance, the winner by a length and a half over European import Lancaster Bomber. Jose Ortiz up in 133 and one. A 10 and a quarter length maiden winner at Saratoga, the Brian Lynch trainee was coming off a front running victory in the grade three Pilgrim Stakes. The Colt by Kitten's Joy was bred in Kentucky by Mrs. Jerry Ammerman. Oscar nominated has earned $720,000 for Ammerman Racing. Next, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Dortmund, the three to five favorite. Again, here's Michael Rona. Dortmund, the big frame looms an imposing presence outside of Run Happy and the sprint champion has no answer as Dortmund and Gunrunner have swept past him with the greatest of ease. Tamakuz is looming forward dangerously and he's being followed into the race by Tom's Ready while Accelerate hugs the fence. Gunrunner has headed Dortmund. Tamakuz is coming after Gunrunner at the eighth pole. Accelerate back on the inside fourth. It's Gunrunner Tamakuz clear of Dortmund and Accelerate. Tamakuz on the outside is charging clear of Gunrunner in the concluding stages. And Tamakuz wins the dirt mile by four. 11 to 1 Tamakuz by Windstar Farm Stallion Spitestown. The winner officially by three and a half lengths over Gunrunner. The start of a big weekend for jockey Mike Smith and for Keeneland sales grads, the mile in 135 and 3. A three-time group stakes winner in Dubai, Tamarcuz has been winless in six previous U.S. starts for trainer Kieran McLaughlin. The six-year-old horse was bred in Kentucky by John Gunther and was a $325,000 Keeneland September yearling. Tamarcuz has banked $1,840,000 for Shadwell Stable. Darby Dan Farm Stallion, Runaway and Hyde, City Zip's best son at stud. Runaway and Hyde's champion, Are You Kidding Me, captured his seventh graded stakes victory, winning the grade two autumn stakes at Woodbine for the second consecutive year. Runaway and Hyde, there's no hiding how good they are. A full field of 14 went postward in the juvenile Phillies turf with La Coronel, the four to one favorite. Michael Rona has the call. Lulled by three into the far turn. In second is Sweeping Paddy. Then comes New Money Honey moving up on the outside of Roly Poly. And a length and a half Hydrangea, Spainberg intricately. La Coronel with a sweeping move out, four deep within six of the lead. Turning for home, Lull comes back to the pursuing pack. Leads by only a length at the 3 sixteenths. Oh, she's kicked away again though. She's two in front, coming to the eighth pole. New Money Honey ranging after her. Coasted getting up on the inside. Then comes Caval Doré. They get to Lull, New Money Honey hits the front, chased by Coasted and Caval Doré, but New Money Honey beat Coasted a half length, Caval Doré third, Lull was fourth. Six to one, New Money Honey holds off 23 to one Coasted by half a length for a one-two finish by Keeneland sales graduates. Javier Castellano up in 134 flat. The third winner of the juvenile Phillies turf for trainer Chad Brown, New Money Honey was last seen breaking her maiden in the grade three Miss Grio stakes. The filly by Medallia Dora was bred in Kentucky by Windstar Farm and was a $450,000 Keeneland September yearling. New Money Honey has earned $686,000 for E5 thoroughbreds. For all your insurance needs, a specialist at Jerry Parks Insurance Group is there to assist you with 40 years of exceptional coverage. Look for Jerry Parks, John Cassie, or Kelly Weeks at the sales. The field for the distaff included three champions with undefeated Songbird, the even-money favorite. 
Once again, here's Michael Rona. Half a mile left to go, 12 lengths covers the field, and it's Songbird by a length and a quarter. I'm a chatterbox a second, Beholder running third. Well, they've been wanting a target, they have won today, as Beholder follows the undefeated three-year-old Songbird around the far turn, and she's being asked to loom closer now by Stevens, and she does so willingly. In fact, she zooms up level at the quarter pole, and Stella Wind is trying to get into the race about four lengths out of it presently. Songbird's the leader, Songbird facing a moment of truth past the 3 16th pole beholder is a head back on the outside then comes forever unbridled who's making a splash Stella Wind is not in the hunt beholder and songbird a soul stirring duel forever unbridled two lengths back third songbird and beholder beholder and songbird a cliffhanger that could go either way It is Beholder, determinedly getting up to take the photo by a nose over Songbird. Gary Stevens aboard the Keeneland sales graduate in 149 and 1. The 11th grade one stakes victory for the three-time champion, including the juvenile fillies at two and the distaff at three. Six-year-old mare by Henny Hughes was bred in Kentucky by Clarkland Farm and was a $180,000 Keeneland September yearling. The 11th Breeders' Cup winner for Stevens and the 9th for trainer Richard Mandela, Beholder retires to the broodmare band at Spendthrift Farm with a bankroll of $6.1 million. Watch Thoroughbred Week replays online at tbreadweek.com. Claiborne Farm is proud to offer the regally bred Orb. The son of Malibu Moon compiled a five-race winning streak that included the Fountain of Youth and Florida Derby. In the Kentucky Derby, he defeated rivals Will Take Charge, Oxbow, Golden Sense, and Palace Malice. Now the millionaire racehorse is garnering big checks for breeders. In the auction ring, Orb is the number one sire of his crop, with first yearling selling up to $450,000. Now is the time to book your mare to Orb at Claiborne Farm. Castleton Farm has a long and distinguished history as one of America's great horse farms, having reared multiple champions over the years. Situated on 1,100 acres, some of the finest bluegrass Kentucky has to offer, with 15 barns, including an isolation farm, providing full-service boarding. Castleton has a depth of professional experience coupled with passion for the thoroughbred horse and is dedicated to providing the most professional boarding experience possible in the thoroughbred industry. Kentucky's premier thoroughbred boarding, Castleton. And now, a Florida thoroughbred history moment. In 1956, a small, feisty horse from Florida named Needles and his owners Jack Dudley and Bonnie Heath shocked the racing world, winning the Kentucky Derby. Needles proved that champions with modest pedigrees could be grown in the Sunshine State, thanks to the limestone-rich soil and spring water. His wild acclaim created the horse capital of the world that we know today. This has been a Florida thoroughbred history moment. We've waited nearly four decades for a horse to conquer the American classics. He was worth the wait. The 37 year wait is over. American Pharaoh has won the Triple Crown. A Triple Crown winner, a Breeders' Cup winner, a horse of a lifetime. Standing at Coolmore America, home of champions. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with a photo finish in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint coming up in this segment. Juvenile Phillies led off the Saturday Breeders' Cup program. American Gal, the four to one favorite. Michael Rona picks up the call. Noted and quoted on top. A length and a half to Champagne Room. American Gal still on the improve. Suffering a wide trip, but up to a level third. In between Phillies is Dancing Rags. Followed on the fence by Sweet Loretta, then with honors. At the head of the others, Yellow Agate to the quarter pole from Valadorna. Daddy's little darling out wide. Reaching the top of the stretch, noted and quoted, being confronted by Champagne Room. They're three lengths in the front of Sweet Loretta. American Gal now under the whip. Dancing Rags feeding from between those. Val 
Belladonna coming home dangerously, but Champagne Room skips well clear. At the eighth pole, leads by three lengths to Valadorna. American Gal is sticking to her task admirably, but it's Champagne Room in front from Valadorna. Champagne Room wins from Valadorna. 33 to 1, Champagne Room holds off Valadorna by three quarters of a length. Mario Gutierrez aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 145 flat. Champagne Room broke her maiden in the Grade 3 Sorrento Stakes, but the Peter Yurton trainee had been winless in her last two starts against Grade 1 Company. The filly by Broken Vow was bred in Kentucky by Respite Farm and was a $70,000 Keeneland November weanling turned $310,000 OBS April 2-year-old. Champagne Room has earned $1,286,000 for Shalyo Racing and Partners. Access Thoroughbred Week replays every Saturday on Thoroughbred Daily News at the TDN.com. Next, the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf, Lady Eli, the 8 to 5 favorite. Again, here's Michael Rona. Past the 5 8 pole comes Avenge, leading Catch a Glimpse by two lengths with Pretty Perfect in third. Kit Kat travels fourth. Three lengths see Khaleesi, a solo fifth. Then comes Nuovo Record, seventh heaven on the inside in the purple colours as they go to the half mile pole. Lady Eli just in behind seventh heavens, following her into the far turn while now shifting one off the rail. Al's Gal's next on the inside from Santiago, Italia, Ryan's Charm, Queen's Trust, and Zapasa. 5 sixteenths to go. A Avenge over catch a glimpse, Kit Kat, and round the outside, see Khaleesi putting in a spurt. Lady Eli into the clear is moving up out three and four deep within three lengths of the lead. Queen's Trust between horses, Seventh Heaven likewise. Into the stretch and Avenge leads by two and a half. Lady Eli setting after her while drifting in slightly. Queen's Trust, Seventh Heaven finishing well. Avenge in front, Lady Eli's coming at her strongly. So is Queen's Trust. Lady Eli and Queen's Trust get to Avenge. Lady Eli and Queen's Trust, camera either Queen's Trust or Lady Eli. Queen's Trust holds off the late charge of Lady Eli by a nose, giving Frankie DeTore his 12th Breeders' Cup victory. Time of the race, 1.57 and 3. Group 1 placed in England in her last three starts, Queen's Trust records her first stakes victory. The three-year-old filly by Dan Silly was bred in Great Britain by her owner, Chevalier Park Stud. The seventh Breeders' Cup winner for trainer Sir Michael Stout, Queen's Trust has earned $1,431,000. Masochistic, the 8-5 to five favorite for the Breeders' Cup Sprint, Michael Rona picks up the call. 5.16s to go, and Dre Fong and Masochistic are tearing strips off each other. Three lengths in front of AP Indian, the race setting up beautifully for him. Top of the stretch, Dre Fong, Masochistic clear from AP Indian. Dre Fong on the inside, and Masochistic still battling it out. AP Indian making no impression. Mind your biscuits is bubbling to the surface. Dre Fong pulls clear of Masochistic. Mind your biscuits finishing with a flourish, but Dre Fong's the leader. Dre Fong has won. Second close. Dre Fong by Castleton Farm Stallion Gio Ponti, the winner by a length and a quarter over Masochistic. Martin Garcia aboard the two-time Keeneland Sales graduate in 108 and 3. The fifth consecutive victory for Bob Baffert trained Dre Fong, who was making his first start since taking the Grade 1 Kings Bishop Stakes. The three-year-old Colt was bred in Kentucky by Frederick Aller, Michael Barnett, and Anthony Warrender. A $200,000 Keeneland November weanling and a $450,000 Keeneland September yearling, Dreyfong has earned $1.2 million for Bioma Corporation. Turf Sprinter is up next with obviously the 7-2 favorite. Once again, the call by Michael Rona. Obviously is the leader. Obviously by a length to pure sensation. Hooking across his heels. Holy loot two lengths back third from Mongolian Saturday. Ambitious Brewers wider from Home of the Brave and Kara and Washington DC making ground along the rail. Three sixteenths to go and obviously clear from pure sensation. Several more lengths to Holy loot. Washington DC on the inside is next from Om. Obviously is the leader. Two lengths still from pure sensation. Om is coming home fast. It's obviously Om is rocking to the wire, obviously needs the line, it's close, obviously, or Ohm. Race favorite obviously holds off the late charge of Ohm by a nose. Flavian Pratt aboard in 111 and 1. Off the board in the Breeders' Cup mile the past three years, obviously cuts back to six and a half furlongs for the turf sprint. The Irish-bred eight-year-old gelding by Shazir is owned by Anthony Fantacola and Joseph Scardino. The first Breeders' Cup winner for leading California trainer Philip D'Amato obviously has earned $2,321,000.
obviously paid $9.60 to win and is the Malone's Favorite of the Week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. Spendthrift farm stallion Malibu Moon, AP Indy's leading sire seven years running. Malibu Moon is AP Indy's leading yearling sire with an impressive average of $230,000. And Malibu Moon ranks number one among all stallions standing for a fee under $100,000 in 2017. And Startup Nation is a very promising colt. Bolo absolutely annihilated them. Miss Temple City sharp in the hilltop. Papa Cool, Papa Cool, exploding through under a hand ride here. Very impressive. Florida Thoroughbred History Moment, founded in 1956. Ocala Stud is the oldest active thoroughbred farm in Florida and a pioneer in the thoroughbred industry. The landmark Ocala Stud's message is simply put, if you want a runner, look to Ocala Stud. Ocala Stud revolutionized the worldwide industry, creating two-year-old in training sales. Now represented by the third generation of the O'Farrell family, the farm's reputation as a top producer of thoroughbreds makes them a symbol of excellence. This has been a Florida Thoroughbred History Moment. A Florida bred. He is not just a racehorse. He is our heart. He is our toil and sweat. He soaks up the bright sunshine, becoming mighty and strong. He feasts on our abundant grass and drinks our mineral rich water. He is a way of life, our champion. His excellence brings us chills as he competes, inspiring us to greatness. He is our purpose, our soul. He is a Florida bred. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week as we continue our recap of the Breeders' Cup World Championships. Two-year-old stakes action is presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. Not this time, the 5-2 favorite for the juvenile, Michael Rona has the call. Syndergaard at the half mile pole, the half length to Classic Empire, three rules a length and a half off third. Theory follows the rail into the far turn, and here comes Not This Time in the blue colours threading forward to fourth, Gormley on his outside, Theory capitulating, passed by Practical Joke, Klimt has ten lengths to make up, and then looking at Lee, five sixteenths to go, and Classic Empire draws alongside Syndergaard, uh, they're two lengths in front from Not This Time, and Practical Joke getting up towards the inside with in striking distance, swinging for home. Three rules are swimming in deeper waters today. Three sixteenths from home, and Classic Empire clear by two and a half lengths to not this time, who's finishing on determinedly. He's wandering about just a tad. Classic Empire to the sixteenth, about a length and a half. Not this time is gradually wearing him down. Classic Empire, not this time. Classic Empire, Classic Empire by a neck, not this time. Four to one second choice, Classic Empire by Windstar Farm Stallion, Pioneer of the Nile. Holds off not this time by a neck. Julian Laparu aboard the Keeneland sales graduate in 142 and three. The third victory in four starts for Classic Empire, who was last seen taking the grade one Claiborne Breeders Futurity. The colt was bred in Kentucky by Steve and Brandy Nicholson and was a $475,000 Keeneland September yearling. Classic Empire has earned $1,485,000. Mark Cassie trains the winner for John Oxley. Julian Leperu with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winner's circle. Flincher sent off as the 9 to 5 favorite for the Breeders' Cup turf. Michael Rona picks up the call. 
less than five eighths from home and Highland Reel. Enterprising tactics here. Highland Reel has kicked away six or seven in front of Ecto halfway along the back stretch. In third position is Ashley Love Sugar, followed by Flint Shear and Money Multiplier. Then Twilight Eclipse, Ulysses, Rallis, Found, Mondi, Elise, Texas, Rayano, and a big hoss. Highland Reel at the three eighths by eight lengths. In second position, Ecto from Ashley Love Sugar. Flint Shear is next from Money Multiplier, Ulysses and Rallis found is about 15 off the tearaway leader splitting horses at the quarter pole. Highland Reels bold bid for glory setting the breeders cup alight as he spins for home on a six length lead. From Flintshire, Ecto the inside Ulysses is next. Found near the fence still a long way out of it. Highland Reel by three to the 16th pole. Flintshire in second position Highland Reel a master class of front running riding from Seamus Heffernan European breds dominate the turf with Highland Reel defeating Flincher by a length and three quarters. The filly found rallies into the show spot. Seamus Heffernan up in 223 flat. Heffernan teamed up with Highland Reel for a similar front running victory in the Grade 1 Secretariat Stakes at three. The Irish bred four year old colt by Galileo was coming off a runner up finish to found in the Group 1 Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. A record sixth winner of the turf for Aidan O'Brien, Highland Reel has earned nearly $7,280,000 for Michael Tabor, Susan Magnier, and Derek Smith. Karina Mia, the three to one favorite against 12 rivals in the Philly and Mare Sprint. Michael Rona picks up the call. Less than three eighths from home. Glory Zappa just in front of Paula's silver lining. Finest City three out. A length and a half. Wavell Avenue picking up steam. Four deep within a length at the quarter pole from Tara's Tango by the moon working off the rail. And then spelling again. Have you gone away? Irish Jasper Karina Mia six lengths out of it. Three sixteenths to go. Paula's silver lining. Finest City being tackled by Wavell Avenue. And by the moon's just in behind them. Then Tara's Tango. It's Finest City just in front taken on by last year's winner Wavell Avenue but Finest City fights on and gives second year trainer Ian Krill Jackie's finest hour. Eight to one Finest City defeats defending champion Wavell Avenue by three quarters of a length. Mike Smith aboard the two-time Keeneland sales graduate in 122 and one. The first Breeders' Cup starter for trainer Ian Krulljack, Finest City was last seen finishing a close second in the Grade 2 John C. Maybe Stakes. The Pennsylvania-bred four-year-old filly by City Zip was a $55,000 Keeneland November weanling and an $85,000 Keeneland September yearling. Finest City has earned $925,000 for Seltzer Thoroughbreds. 14 went postward in the Breeders' Cup mile, including defending champion Teppen, but the three-to-one favorite was European import Lamato. Once again, here's Michael Rona. It's what a view, throwing them down in bold fashion at the half mile, six lengths to the good of Midnight Storm, Miss Temple City third, and then comes Photo Call. In fifth position, Lamato going into the far turn in advance of Tourist and Teppen. Alice Springs midfield on the inside with three-eighths of a mile to go. Dutch Connections out wide. And back behind them, Ironicus to the court of pole. What of you comes back to the pursuing pack. Miss Temple City is the new leader as they swing for home. And uh, with her is Midnight Storm. And there's a split coming one off the rail for Tourist. Lamato is wider out. Photo call. Teppen down the outside. A 16th to go. And Tourist on the inside just has the lead. Teppen charging furiously in pursuit of Tourist. Tourist Teppen. Tourist beat Teppen a neck. 12 to 1 Tourist by Windstar Farm Stallion Tis Now and racing in the colors of Windstar Farm defeats Teppen officially by half a length. Joel Rosario aboard in stakes record 131 and 3. Third time's the charm for Tourist who was a troubled 13th in the 2014 mile and 8th in this race last year. The Bill Mott trainee was coming off a close third in the grade 1 Shadwell turf mile. The five-year-old horse was bred in Kentucky by Windstar Farm. Tourist has earned $2,170,000 for Windstar Farm, Wachtell Stable, and Gary Barber. Coming up, a classic for the ages. Mama Joyce to kick off the early pick four with an easy win. It's First Heritage in front. First Heritage begins to edge away. Stick Stately Dude gets there and pulls away in the end. But here's Floradora on the outside, and it's the New York invader, Floradora, to win it.
Since Florida's first Kentucky Derby winner, Needles, in 1956, Florida has produced 50 national champions, the 11th Triple Crown winner, 13 classic winners, 155 millionaires, memorable performances, and 26 Breeders' Cup winners. Produce your next champion in Florida. Now a Florida Thoroughbred History Moment. Founded in 1956, Ocala Stud is the oldest active thoroughbred farm in Florida and a pioneer in the thoroughbred industry. The landmark Ocala Stud's message is simply put, if you want a runner, look to Ocala Stud. Ocala Stud revolutionized the worldwide industry, creating two-year-old in training sales. Now represented by the third generation of the O'Farrell family, the farm's reputation as a top producer of thoroughbreds makes them a symbol of excellence. This has been a Florida Thoroughbred History Moment. The Windstar Farm Star Breeders of the Month are Stephen and Brandy Nicholson. Stephen and Brandy are the breeders of Classic Empire. The son of Pioneer of the Nile impressively captured the Grade 1 Breeders Fraternity last month at Keeneland, making him a leading contender in the upcoming $2 million Breeders Cup Keeneland. The lead and Classic Empire, the favorite, has the lead by three lakes. Classic Empire wins it in style. Thank you, Stephen and Brandy. You make the dream possible. The Keeneland November Breeding Stock Sale, the pinnacle of bloodstock opportunity. Featuring an outstanding selection of horses of racing age selling November 14th and 15th, including offerings from the Conquest Stables Dispersal, Windstar Farm, and more. The Keeneland November Breeding Stock Sale, November 8th through the 20th. Learn more and explore updates and past performances for horses of racing age online at november.keeneland.com. Time now for the feature race of the week presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. It's the 33rd running of the Breeders' Cup Classic. California Chrome, the 9 to 10 favorite. Here's the call by Michael Rona. California Chrome in front of the half mile opens the lead to two. In second position is Melatonin with Arrogate sitting back third. He spots California Chrome four lengths going into the far bend. Then comes Frosted fourth on the inside from Ethanex. The order hasn't changed much. Back into the second half of the field are Keen Ice in company with Opportunity win the space and War Story. California Chrome to the 5 16 by two and a half. Arrogate the solitary three year old is sweeping after him in a Ernest as they race well clear of Melatonin. Frosted is next from Keen Ice. Top of the stretch, California Chrome is a length in front, but he faces an uncommon opponent today. Arrogate tries hard to reel in California Chrome. California Chrome with Espinosa going for the whip is still in front. Arrogate trying his heart out. California Chrome from Arrogate, a pulsating climax to the classic. Arrogate takes the lead and wins. 8-5 to five second choice, Arrogate runs by California Chrome to defeat the odds on favorite by half a length. A record 25 Breeders' Cup victories for Mike Smith. The Keeneland sales graduate clocked in two minutes flat. Third consecutive winner of the Classic for Bob Baffert, Arrogate is working on a five-race winning streak, including a record-setting 13-and-a-half length victory in the Grade 1 Travers. The three-year-old colt by Unbridled Song was bred in Kentucky by Clear Sky Farms and was a $560,000 Keeneland September yearling. Arrogate has earned $4 million dollars for Judmont Farms. Arrogate, one of eight 2016 Breeders' Cup champions to be sold at Keeneland. Arrogate, Finest City, Classic Empire, Drafong, Champagne Room, Beholder, and New Money Honey, and Tamar Cruz, the Keeneland Sales Graduates of the Week. We'll see you next week on Thoroughbred Week.